Hi and welcome back to ABG Sandal Collier's Investor Day. My name is Hanna Forsgren and I work as an equity research analyst here at ABG. And with me today I have Per Vitalisson, CEO for Eolus Wind, who will present the company. The stage is yours. Thank you, Hanna, for the introduction and thank you for the po possibility to, to present uh, Eolus here at the uh, Investor uh, Days. Um, Eolus is uh, do, doing business in the middle of the me mega trends of electrification and uh, su sustainability. Um, so, um, and renewable energy is really growing uh, a lot in Sweden, in all the markets where we are active, and also globally. Uh, and more renewable energy is real key um, to uh, cope with all the, uh, the challenges of the transition um, uh, to, to help and to, to support electricity intensive industries and uh, with their transformation and to fight high power prices. So Eolus is a developer of uh, renewable projects. Uh, we've been in the business since uh, 1990. So everything we, should, uh, we are doing should be based on the experience that we have gained from, uh, uh, from all the projects uh, we, have, uh, we have done over that, uh, uh, that time. Uh, we are developing projects from Greenfield. We are handling the permitting process. We are doing the procurement. Uh, the optimization of all projects and uh, our preferred model is to sell um, at ready to build and then to construct projects on behalf of the uh, investors and then to operate the, the assets commercially and technically on behalf of uh, our customers, the, uh, the investors. Um, with that, that model, uh, we don't focus on to own our own assets. Um, it is very capital intense to, uh, to uh, own um, uh, renewable facilities as uh, all uh, electricity production uh, facilities. So we're having a, a, a very asset light business model where uh, our customers are mainly financing the construction um, of the uh, of the projects. Uh, we have over time um, built more than 660 uh, wind uh, turbines, uh, most of them in uh, in Sweden, but, but also, uh, for instance, in in US, in in California. And that first project we did in in the US, the first wind project we did there, is a really illustrating example of the tech technological development of uh, wind power over the decades. We bought into a, 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 a so-called repowering project, an old operating wind farms, wind farm that was uh, uh, had been in operation since the, since the mid 1980s uh, outside of uh, Los Angeles. We, we got the permit to remove the 400 old wind turbines um, and a new permit to construct 13 new uh, uh, modern turbines instead, instead. So we could use the power lines, we could uh, renovate and upgrade the transformer station. And with replacing 400 old turbines with 13 new ones, the production increased four times. So that's the um, um, uh, technological development over just a couple of decades. And that, that's uh, what you should bear in mind uh, what you, when you think about what, what wind power uh, and renewable, for, for that matter, can, can do for the entire um, energy uh, transformation. Another example is uh, from, from Sweden, a uh, recent example here from, from the statistics from, from February. Uh, wind power, Swedish wind power and Swedish nuclear produced just the same um, amount of electricity over the whole month of, 
of February. So 27% of Sweden's electricity produced came from wind power, 27% came from nuclear, and 40% came from, from uh, hydro. So and over already uh, du during this, this year we'll see a lot of more months li like that and wind power in Sweden will be the, the second largest production uh, source. But back to, uh, back to EULUS. We uh, operate the facilities technically and commercially on behalf of the uh, investors. So we have um, uh, more than 1,500 megawatts uh, co contracted uh, as, as under asset management. Um, co compared to the uh, quite volatile uh, project and construction uh, business, um, uh, this is a very good. Uh, 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 this uh, is uh, complementing the, the other business quite quite well. It's a uh, quarterly invoicing, a good cash uh, cash flow at uh, decent uh, margins, um, and the financial investors who have been dominant in this uh, uh, industry for the last uh, decade. Many of them don't want to build up their own asset management uh, teams, so it's a good opportunity for us to to really work close with the investors and to do repeat deals uh, with them if they're happy with their uh, assets. As a project uh, developer, I, I say it's important to have a large project portfolio and also to have a lot of patience. Uh, and I would say that EULUS has both. Uh, it takes time to, to develop um, a project. Uh, sometimes, um, uh, you can get fr frustrated over the long lead times, but it's just just to to work with it, to do the, to do the best of it, to uh, diversify over te techniques and uh, and markets. So Elus has a, a project portfolio of almost uh, 22 gigawatt in different stages. We are uh, we obviously coming from the onshore wind side of the business since that has been the most mature. To technology, but we should always develop and construct the projects <coughs> that uh, the uh, 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 the market will need and support the needs of the of the markets in the in the best way. So we have also uh, uh, recently uh, grown our offshore wind portfolio uh, with sizable numbers. We're adding since a couple of years a lot of solar PV projects and also. Um, energy storage projects, mainly battery storage uh, uh, projects. And going forward, we will see a lot of combinations of these uh, techniques to, to utilize the grid connections uh, better and to um, uh, uh, supply the market better and to be more relevant from uh, um, increase the benefits from a system uh, perspective. We're active in uh, the, the Nordic countries, uh, Baltics, Poland, uh, and in the uh, US. And in, in the US, it's mainly in the southwestern states of uh, California, uh, Nevada, Arizona, where we have been active uh, since uh, 2015. And we have so far done uh, three tra transactions there. So we're uh, talking about the energy uh, trilemma um, and we're uh, working in that field to, uh, to, to solve uh, issues and, and to, to provide um, decentralized renewable power at affordable prices for consumers and, um, uh, and uh, industries. Um, so that, that's the mindset that we always uh, are, are having when de developing uh, uh, projects and always thinking ahead when this project will be permitted in three, five, eight, ten years. Uh, how can we, uh, what problems do we think there are to be solved at the, at the market? Why is this project better than um, anything else on, uh, on, on the markets? Uh, 
Um, there are, of course, uh, uh, challenges. Uh, the, uh, I mentioned the electrification as a mega trend. It's going really fast, but uh, the requirements uh, and the need for, for, for speed is a real uh, challenge. There is a risk if we're not doing it uh, qu quick enough that uh, investments and job opportunities will, will go uh, elsewhere in the, in the world. Uh, it has become apparent uh, during the last year of the energy crisis how um, uh, dependent we are and connected to, to each other, um, the, the different uh, countries, and that the need for uh, both uh, increased uh, degree of self-supply we, we will need, uh, will need to, to increase, and also the, that the permitting lead times must uh, be, be shortened uh, um, to face these uh, 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 challenges. And uh, EU is uh, addressing this uh, by their initiative Repower uh, EU, uh, which, uh, uh, whereby they are requesting all the member states to, to shorten uh, permitting lead times and to to uh, make it easier for uh, uh, co construction of uh, new renewable uh, uh, projects. Well, uh, in the US, the, the Biden uh, administration um, um, Im implemented uh, the so-called Inflation Reduction Act last summer, which is a massive bill to, to transform the uh, American um, uh, energy uh, sector and with uh, huge support for uh, renewables. And since we've been so long in the in the US, uh, we're um, benefiting uh, quite a lot from uh, from that uh, now. If we're lo looking at uh, the the needs uh, just for just for Sweden. Uh, the a new government is, is focusing on a target of uh, reaching uh, a Swedish um, um, electricity pr production of 300 terawatt hours by uh, 2045. Uh, we are uh, currently producing around 170 terawatt hours, but um, uh, until the 2045, uh, there will be roughly 80 terawatt hours that uh, will uh, be taken out of production. So that means that until 2045, we need to add 210 terawatt hours of yearly production. Uh, and just to, to visualize that, that means that we will have to build one new nuclear reactor of the largest size uh, that Sweden has today, the Oscar Sun 3 reactor, each year. 2023, 2024, 2025, and onwards, if it should be met only with, uh, with nuclear. Or the, it would be the equivalent of two um, large offshore uh, wind farms per year. So it is apparent that we need a lot of... Uh, uh, all technologies will be needed. Uh, and that there is a lot, lot to do, and we have to get, really get get moving. Looking at the EOLUS uh, pro uh, uh, project uh, portfolio, um, it amounts now to uh, uh, 22 gigawatt. Uh, we have uh, uh, added a lot of projects over the last uh, last year. Uh, we have uh, quite an uh, ambitious. Uh, business plan from uh, 22, uh, 2022 to 2024, uh, where we are scaling up uh, both the project portfolio and uh, investing heavily in, uh, in, in people to, uh, uh, to do it. So we have more or less doubled number of employees uh, uh, in, in one year. So we're now slightly uh, above. 100 uh, uh, employees. You see that uh, onshore uh, wind projects and offshore wind projects are now uh, roughly the same size of our total portfolio. And of course, when we add offshore projects, it uh, adds up 
a lot to uh, to the total megawatts since the projects are are so so large but they are in in um, um, on average uh, of course a much earlier stage than the uh, uh, what the onshore projects are and you can see also that uh, solar PV projects uh, is a significant uh, part. It's uh, mainly in um, in the US, Arizona, California, Nevada, of course, but also in in Poland and in in Sweden. In Poland, we're uh, growing up uh, uh, um, uh, uh, quite a significant pipeline of uh, solar PV projects. Uh, the permitting lead times are shorter. They are easier to to connect to the uh, to the grid, and there are some political restrictions uh, to construct modern wind projects in um, uh, in Poland under the current regime. We are developing a modern wind pro uh, pi pipeline in Poland as well to be ready when uh, that legislation will be uh, re removed. And as I mentioned, you will see a lot of combinations of projects going going forward. So you should not think uh, of a wind project as only a wind project. It will be combined with battery storage or with the solar PV um, um, or with hydrogen pr production uh, either in uh, close to, to the wind farm or by uh, close by industries that need uh, hydrogen for their uh, production. As a project uh, developer, our uh, revenues and our uh, profits varies a, a lot over, over time. Uh, we are working with quite uh, a few projects in, in construction phase um, uh, at the same time. So th therefore we, we uh, uh, try to be uh, transparent and, and give uh, an overview in our quarterly reports about our late stage uh, uh, development uh, projects. So you can see from, from the top that there's uh, quite, uh, quite a lot of uh, Swedish uh, wind, onshore wind power projects, uh, but also the first uh, Swedish uh, solar PV project that we expect to start construction during this year. And there are pro uh, Onshore wind projects in uh, Finland, Latvia, and uh, also our first small uh, Polish PV project uh, coming through. And then there are also uh, some of these really large American uh, projects that are maturing good in the, in the pipeline. We're also communicating about our uh, projects under construction. Uh, we have the large Norwegian uh, project, Øyfjellet, that we are uh, close to, to complete. Uh, we have the uh, uh, Rosenskog, uh, Kjerne, Skalbet and Utterberg projects in, uh, in Dalarna, where the sales process is ongoing. Um, and the Storsjöljön project in, outside Sundsvall, um, uh, which has been sold and we are constructing on behalf of uh, the investors. And these projects number two and number number four uh, is expected to be taken into operation late 2023. And this is a picture of where our uh, onshore <coughs> offshore wind uh, uh, projects are uh, located. They're mo mostly located around the uh, southern coasts of uh, of Sweden. But we also have uh, two, two Finnish projects that so far has uh, developed quite, quite good and with a higher speed than, than the Swedish permitting uh, processes. We have uh, teamed up uh, in a joint venture with a Simply Blue group, an Irish uh, company working with offshore uh, uh, projects for uh, uh, four, four different uh, projects. And uh, we also have a Latvian project, Kusume, where we have teamed up with the, with the German developer, uh, p and &E. Looking at, at figures, in February we announced the Q4 uh, report. Uh, we had a turnover of uh, 2.4 uh, billion SEC, uh, with a net, net profit of uh, 116 million SEC. 
uh, for the uh, entire uh, year. And as you can see, uh, substantial growth of the portfolio. Uh, we have an, uh, uh, we're in a good financial position. I, I would say with an equity to asset ratio of more than uh, more than fifty percent and a net cash uh, position. And the board has proposed a, a dividend of uh, 1.50 sec per, per share. Regarding our, our financial targets in the uh, current uh, business plan, uh, we have uh, first of all a target to, to sell uh, at least a thousand megawatt on, uh, on average per year uh, over the years uh, 2022 to 2024. Uh, we succeeded uh, with uh, with uh, that uh, for for the first year, um, uh, where the large solar and battery project uh, in uh, Arizona uh, was the largest part, and the Storsjön project in in Sweden did did the rest. We have also a growth uh, target, uh, so we are saying that uh, from 2025 uh, we we should aim to sell um, uh, at least 1,500 megawatts per, per year. So that's why we are scaling up both uh, project um, uh, portfolio and uh, people to, uh, to work uh, with it. Uh, the target uh, that we didn't meet for, for, for the last year was a return on equity. Uh, uh, which uh, due to um, uh, uh, after deduction of the minority in the Stuhel uh, uh didn't then meet the, uh, the target. Uh, growth uh, equity ratios should ex exceed 30% and we're uh, uh, at 54%, so that's uh, 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 well above uh, target. And uh, uh, we are we have a um, um, dividend policy saying that we should uh, pay out uh, uh, between 20 and 50 percent of the uh, of the yearly net, uh, and the rest we are then willing to to uh, invest in uh, in the expansion of the company. Um, I just wanted to to highlight uh, this project the. Uh, uh, um, Centennial Flats project in Arizona, which we have developed, is a really large project. 500 megawatts of solar PV in the desert of uh, Arizona, uh, and with a battery component uh, of um, uh, about 250 megawatts adding to, to that. So we've developed the project with uh, um, and the uh, grid co connection we have sold uh, the, the project. We have received a first milestone payment of $12 million during uh, 2022. Uh, we will get paid uh, by the investor um, by milestones as the project um, uh, uh, develops and are uh, getting constructed uh, with the last payment when they re reach commercial uh, operation. And uh, we've communicated that we expect the total purchase price uh, to, to be in a range between 104 and 190 million dollars. So if this project succeeds according to, to plan, it will be of real importance for EOS for uh, during the coming years. The Storsjölsjön uh, project uh, is the... Um, uh, uh, Second most important project for, for 2023. Uh, we are um, uh, constructing it together with our uh, partner Hydro Rain. Um, uh, and uh, it will be taken into operation uh, by the end of 2023. Uh, and finally, the Öfjell project in, in Norway, where all turbines were taken over by the investor during uh, the, uh, the autumn. We've reached the degree of completion by uh, uh, 95%. There are some buildings left to be constructed uh, during this summer, service buildings and like, uh, 
like, like that. So finally, to, to summarize a strong portfolio grow, uh, growing um, and a good financial position um, and with uh, dedicating and dedicated and competent employees to, uh, to, to take care of it. I think we're in a good position to, to take advantage of all the opportunities and handle the challenges ahead of us. Thanks. Thank you very much, Per, for the presentation. Unfortunately, the time is up, uh, but thank you very much. Thank you.